One costly superannuation mistake and how to avoid it. Hi there, Jared Brown here, Australian expat finance planner. Welcome to my video series. In this video, we're unpacking a case study where an Australian expat couple living in Singapore made a costly mistake when it came to their tax and their superannuation. So in this video, we're going to unpack where they were at, what they did wrong, although with the right intentions and with the best of intentions to save and put money towards their retirement and what you can be doing to avoid this same mistake. So let's dive into some of the details of their case. Now, this particular couple, we'll call them Robert and Susan. Naturally, the names have been changed to protect their identity, but they're an Australian expat couple. They've been in Singapore for a number of years, and they're now gearing up or planning for their repatriation to Australia to be able to lead a comfortable retirement back down in Melbourne. Now, over the years, they've been investing heavily in Australian property, and that's primarily where the majority of their wealth has sat. They've got a bit of superannuation, they've been gradually making some contributions to super, and they came to us in the position where they had an investment property in Australia and their future home. So they're going to move into the future home and they need to sell the, pro sell the investment property. Now, the investment property is in Robert's name only, bought the property whilst living in Singapore. It's grown, but not a great deal because Melbourne property has been relatively soft over the last three, four years, but they're aware they need to sell it and put money into their super to be able to live off when they retire. Now, over the last few years before they'd come to us, Robert and Susan have both been diligently contributing to their super using the non-concessional limit each and every year, 110,000 recently increased to 120,000 per year to the point where Robert's superannuation balance was $530,000. So great to have that balance, thought he was doing the right thing, building up his super, and then came to us for advice. Now, on the investment property that needs to be sold, it's in Robert's name only, and the taxable gain is going to be $200,000 when they sell the property. So let's dive into some of the tax implications, what they can do to reduce the tax, and where this costly mistake really lies. Now, as I mentioned, the property was bought in Robert's name only, and it was bought about five, six years ago. The taxable gain on the property was 200,000 Australian dollars. So if they do nothing, sell the property, pay tax, then that $200,000 taxable gain would incur a tax liability of $65,350. Now, Robert can contribute to his super fund, make a concessional contribution to his super, and that $30,000 would become a tax deduction. It would incur contributions tax of 15%, so $4,500 tax on the way into super, but we get to claim it as a tax deduction. So what, in, what ends up happening is Robert's tax bill drops from $65,350 to $57,950. So about a seven to $8,000 saving in our tax by making that contribution. Better than a kick in the teeth. But here's where the mistake lies, or here's where the costly exercise really lies. Now, I mentioned earlier, Robert and Susan have been diligently contributing to their super funds. And last financial year, they each contributed $110,000 into their respective super funds. Now that kicked Robert's superannuation balance above 500,000 as of June 30, just gone. Now, why that's a bit of a mistake, why that's a costly exercise to have gone through is because we have exceeded the $500,000 limit, we can't use the carry forward concessional contribution. Now, had we been able to do that, that would have meant we could contribute the last five years of unused contributions into our super fund, unused concessional contributions, plus this year's $30,000 contribution, which all would have been tax deductible. So let's have a look at those numbers and what this has actually cost Robert and Susan. Now, as I mentioned, they could have contributed the last five years plus this year into Robert's super fund. That would have been 162,500 of the 200 
straight into his superannuation fund. Now, what would the tax bill have been in that case? It would have been $35,625. So by diligently contributing to super and by breaching the $500,000 cap, as of June 30 just gone, Robert and Susan have in effect cost themselves or paid additional tax of $22,325. That is quite a significant sum just by getting the timing of their super contributions slightly wrong. So when you're thinking about returning to Australia, retirement planning in Australia, bumping up your superannuation, make sure you're giving some thought to the contribution limits, the rules around the carry forward rules, and of course, what your tax position is going to be. Drop me a note with any questions you've got. Do remember to like the channel, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and of course, look forward to seeing you in the next video.